everyone, welcome to the VitaCast episode 98. We're back. I'm Tyler Oltoff. That guy over there, that's Kyle Wakeling. What's up, Kyle? Uh, not much, Tyler. Not much. Feeling better than yesterday, so well, that's, that's good. good. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, um, for you podcast listeners who were wondering why this podcast was a day or so late, um, I had some bad food. So I don't know what was bad about it. It tasted fine. Um, I made it myself. It was fresh ingredients. There's but... your problem. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> not the greatest good. But um, yeah, so I ate and then I was feeling okay. And then I kind of like was lounging in this chair, just kind of messing around in between playing some Code Realize. Um, and I kind of started feeling gross. So I was like, well, I'll just have a nap. So I went for a nap and mid nap I woke up like having to throw up so it was it was not good and I just kind of evacuated my stomach and then I was kind of fine so huh. I don't know what the hell was going on it was some food not agreeing with me for sure um, I'm not necessarily sure it's food poisoning because I didn't feel that horrible after but not a good start to the podcast so we <laughs> skipped it and here we are <laughs> yeah your body didn't want anything to do with that no, it did not. <laughs> well, all right. Well, I'm glad you're feeling all right. Me too. Well, is it is it kind of crazy, Kyle, to see that 98? We're so close to that 100. It is. It makes me feel like I've been here a long time, it, doesn't it? It has been quite a long time. Because <laughs> 98, and then there's 52 weeks in a year, so that's like two years. Oh, yeah. Tyler. Plus, we missed a couple, so, you know, it is two years, but it isn't two years, and it's, I don't know. It's, I don't it's know, crazy. Man. It's a lot. <laughs> We've been at it for a long time. We have. We have. Well, let, let's continue it. We, we still got a couple episodes to go. We can't talk too soon. We're not there yet. <laughs> That's right, Tyler. We're not there yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways. The show must go on. It must. This is the Vita cast. We talk about the Vita if you're new to the show, we start with that, what we've been playing, and Kyle, what have you been playing? Well, Tyler, <laughs> pretty much my whole last week has been devoted to Code Realize. Um, I, I I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a really hard to explain game without spoiling things, um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm so, like, into it. Like, I, I don't know, it's it's really weird for me to be this into a visual novel, especially an Atome visual novel, but it's like, I want to see what happens next so bad that I've barely been able to put it down, especially the last few days. Well, so, that's good. High praise. <laughs> if you need a recommendation for an Atome visual novel, there you go. Um, it's basically you start out and it's, you're, uh, of course, a female protagonist, um, and you are considered to be a monster because your skin, the touch of your skin, can kill or melt anything. So you're kind of locked away and are in, like, this mansion by yourself, and then kind of a whole bunch of shit goes down, and this guy end up, ends up rescuing you, and you go with him, and he promises to kind of help you. So things kind of start off from there, and it just gets pretty crazy. Uh, there's lots going on. It's very... Um, Kind of like a movie in the fact that it, it keeps your attention to want to see what happens next. It's not just, you know, you care about the characters. It's like the story is progressing and you don't know exactly how it's going to go as you're going farther. So I, I don't know. It's it's really, really interesting and I don't want to spoil it too much. So I'll stop there. Um, <laughs> other than that, though, um, I have played a little bit here and there of other games. Um, I played some Senran Kagura Shinobi Versus. I did a video on that. Um, I played some Killzone because it's... I, I don't know. I'm getting back into the addiction mode on that. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was good. Um, and also, I just wanted to comment on we had like a patch that went off. I don't know what that did. It didn't seem to do anything for me. It didn't change a damn thing. So if anyone's wondering... Um, and I played some Mock Shots Golf because that is my addiction. So that was pretty much my week. What did you play this week, Tyler? Anything as exciting as that? <laughs> well, I platinumed... Tyler. Can you not hear me? 
Tyler. Hello. Oh, you're back. There was like something weird going on there. Yeah, my internet's going in and out like oh. it normally does. Uh, I can't hear you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck this internet. <laughs> of course that comes through clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about now? Alright, you're clear now. I think it's because I'm downloading something on my Vita. That could be it. So I stopped it. Anyways. Well. I've been playing some stuff. And I've been very frustrated. Not because of the stuff I've been playing, but because of my goddamn internet. I've been having a rough week. And it's it's only going downhill. So. I'm going to try to stay positive. Positive feelings are going to be pushed out. And hoping I can continue it. But anyways, enough negativity. Let's go back to positive. I platinumed Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Platinum. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty easy. Um, there is a it is, is a bit of a grind on some of the things, but literally, it's not as bad as some of the games you have to grind for. So, if you like the game and you're looking for a platinum. It's pretty easy, so go get it. Um, so yeah, I obviously beat Persona 4 Dancing all night. I loved it, had a lot of fun with it, and yeah, it was, it was a good game. Um, also, I've been playing a bit of Corp Party Blood Drive, um, and that game is its good and weird at the same time. I don't know. It's <laughs> they do a pretty good job of explaining what happened in the the previous games, which is kind of nice, but still don't really know a lot about it. So I mean, if you never played the first two games and you're worried about playing Blood Drive and being completely lost, you won't be completely lost, but you will be a little lost. Uh <laughs> so yeah, I mean it basically takes place right after the the second one, I think. And they kind of explain what happened in that. And, yeah, so, I'm caught up, I feel like. I don't have to go watch Let's Plays or buy the, the two games to try to see what happened. So, I'm okay with that. Um, but the load times in that game are so annoying. Every room you go into, load screen. Load screen. It's so frustrating. But it's still very interesting. Um, so, yeah. That's, I think, pretty much it. I've been so, like I said, frustrated with everything that I haven't even had a chance to play m more Invoker's Tournament and do that because I've been, ha obviously, Invoker's Tournament is an online game and my internet has been fucking shit. So doing anything online has been a hassle for me. So it's 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 difficult. So hopefully I can get that review done in a timely manner. But as of lately, it's not looking very good unfortunately. Hopefully I can get this internet figured out and I will get right on that. So, meh. Anyways, positivity. Positivity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, positivity. Uh, so yeah, that's about all I've been playing. Um, yeah, let's jump into those reviews. Uh, so I'll, I'll take the first one. Uh, it's three-fourths home extended edition. It was reviewed by Liam. He gives it a 4.3 out of 5. and He says, quote, Three-fourths home extended edition is one of the most unique and incredible experiences I've ever had on the PlayStation Vita. It may be incredibly short, but at the same time, it never outstays its welcome. Absolutely astounding. End quote. So I haven't played this one. Uh, I got a review code for it, so I plan on trying it out. Um, it, it looks very interesting. I think it's kind of like a visual novel style game, I think. Uh, what about you, Kyle? You planning on getting this? I actually don't know too much about this one. Uh, I remember reading about it back when we first announced that it was coming, but I think the, the date was off or something like that, um, and it ended up that they were releasing it like this month instead of last month. So Yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of got lost somewhere in my head, so I'm not really even sure what the hell it's about. So that's one I'm going to have to look into before I make a decision. I, I got gotcha. you. Well, all right. Take the next one. All right. 
<laughs> yeah, so moving on to the next one, uh, we have Rally Copters, which was reviewed by Zach, and he gave it a 2.8 out of 5, saying, quote, Rally Copters has the foundations to be a great game if someone... Er, blah, 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 blah. I can't speak. <laughs> Rallycopters has the foundations to be a great game if some changes were made too. However, its hoard difficulty curve and lack of levels bring it down from what it could be. You will most likely enjoy your time with the helicopter simulator, but you won't leave a lasting impression in your Vita catalog. Okay, so it seems like he enjoyed enough of it to get through it, but it was kind of a chore, so maybe... It's not for you? I don't know. Um, it doesn't look like it's for me. What about you, Tyler? Yeah, I have no interest in this, and this review definitely solidifies that. But I mean, I guess, it, I mean, a 2.8 is not terrible, but it's definitely something that you really need to read into before you make a purchase. So, yeah. Definitely. That, that's all that. <laughs> all right. The last review here is Farming Simulator 16. It was reviewed by Brad. He gives it a 3.5 out of 5. And he says, quote, Farming Simulator 16 returns to the Vita, and it's bigger and better than ever. A number of small tweaks and additional features makes it the best portable farming sim yet. But those improvements come with a steep price tag. And the improvements are probably not enough for an upgrade. Still, for people looking to jump into a relaxing and long farm management game, Farming Simulator 16 is a good place to start. End quote. Yeah, I played a little bit of this. I had no idea what the price was when I got it because obviously I got a review copy of it, so I was like, all right. And then when it came out and I looked at the price, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> it is pretty pricey, so I don't think it's worth that price either. Um, I think it should be maybe like $20 cheaper than what it is. I think it's thirty nine ninety nine. It's either that or 29 Whatever it is, it's way too high. Um, so... Hopefully a price drop comes soon, because I don't see it doing too hot, unless it's a really popular game and people are just like, whatever, it's Farming Simulator, I'll pay $50. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see that. If people aren't willing to pay $50 for Persona 4 Dancing all night, uh, I don't know, you'd want to spend $40 on a farming game. But hey, everyone's different. Anyways, Kyle, what about you? You going to get your farming on? Oh god, no. God, no. Um, I'm not a fan of farming games at all, and then just it being super expensive and super kind of lame, I'm, I'm not even interested. Not at all. <laughs> I, I gotcha. Well, definitely check out that review, people, and see if it's something for you and you're willing to drop that big bucks you, you worked so hard to earn on this game. <laughs> Well, all right, that is all the reviews from the week, so let's jump into those new releases. First up, we've got the North American list, and we've got Code Realized Guardian of Rebirth for $39.99, the Oregon Trail Complete Edition for $9.99. It is $6.99 on PlayStation Plus. And then we've got Pocket God vs. Desert Ashes for $4.99, and it is $3.99 if you have PlayStation Plus. Kyle, what are they getting over in Europe? Well, Europe's getting Code Realized Guardian of Rebirth for €34.99, €28.99, pounds, and 5295 Australian dollars. They're also getting Corpse Party Blood Drive for €34.99, €28.99, pounds, or 5295 Australian dollars. There's also Space Hulk, which comes out Friday, and that's €24.99, €19.99, or pounds, and Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma Extend, which also comes out Friday. And that's €39.99, Euros, 34 99 pounds, or 54 95 Australian dollars. Well, all right. So we already know you got Code Realized Guardian of Rebirth. Uh, are you going to get any of the other games? Um, I don't know. Oregon Trail, I might pick up if it gets really cheap, just because I remember playing those kind of games way back when, and it might be some nostalgia for me. Um, the rest of them, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Blaze Blue is not my jam. That That's from the EU list, and Space Hulk, I've read the review on that, and no way. Corpse Party, I gotta get there, but unlike Tyler, I kind of want to know the real backstory. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it might be some time. Um, and Pocket God versus Desert Ashes, no thank you. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. that Corpse Party game, it came with an art book, and it has, like, the first game and the second game, like, separated, and it has, like, a right. little biography of it, what happened. So, just another thing. I read through it and was like, oh, okay, so that's what happened in the first game. Oh, okay, that's what happened in the second game. All right, let's get into the third game. <laughs> Damn, but, Tyler. <laughs> I'm not trying to like make you like want to spend money when you you can't, but I think you should want to spend money, Kyle. <laughs> Damn it, Tyler. <laughs> it's pretty good. I do want. Just, just don't talk about it. <laughs> All right. All right. <sighs> it's my birthday coming up soon. Maybe somebody will buy it for me. <laughs> or give me money and I'll buy it. There you go. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Yeah. Stuff happens. <laughs> well... For me, Code Realize, Guardian of Rebirth, I'm not into Otoma games, but I might actually pick it up for my girlfriend, because she's a girl, <laughs> and she likes those, so um, if Kyle's giving this one high praise, uh, then I think she'll probably love it, because she really enjoyed uh, that other one that just recently came out, I can't think of it. Oh, this is better than that. This is better than Amnesia Memories. Really? Yeah. Alright, well, yes. I think I'll pick it up, and her birthday's actually coming up kind of soon, too, so... Ooh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oregon Trail, meh. It looks interesting, but I've been really trying to be smart with my purchases, and I have, after purchasing purchasing WRC five, I I did the whole the face palm thing because I probably shouldn't have bought it, but <laughs> there I did. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. <laughs> I played a. Oh, that's I. Okay, I lied. I guess I have played something else. I'm going back to that old routine I had of forgetting games. I played WRC 5 this week because I wanted to play more, and I suck at the game. The game is so different. Like, I, I crashed so much, and, like, they've changed a lot, so it's, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. WRC 4 was so awesome. So awesome. A lot of people seem to think it's a step down, and I don't know. Yeah, I makes, mean... Makes me kind of not, not want to buy it and just maybe get 4, and then I can help you with the Platinum with that. And I would highly try recommend about five. For. Not just to help me with the platinum, but just in general, as it, like, if you have the two games side by side, I'd say get four, like right away. Like that is the one you need. Five can <laughs> wait. It can wait forever. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, there you go. Those are your new releases. Uh, let's jump into the news. We don't have too much here, so it's gonna go by pretty quick. So let's get right into it. Uh, first up, we loved size 5 games The Swindle, but there was no de denying that it was brutal and had a few niggles. That's a weird word. Thankfully, Curve Digital have listened to the feedback from the players and submitted a new patch for Cybercrime Heist Caper, which is now available to download. In a post on the Curse website, PR guru Richie Antiknap said that the game will feature the following fixes. Improved overall stability, improved overall gameplay controls, fixed issue with killing a Tesla bot, fixed teleportation issues, fixed issue with issues with hacking, fi fixed issues with user interface, in-game economy has now been rebalanced, made improvements to procedurally generated maps, made changes to Basilisk security. The patch is available now, so so gra so gra go, <laughs> so go grab it if you've got the game downloaded. Amiga Classic Kickoff to see a PlayStation release in 2016. If you are as old as whoever wrote this, you'll probably be familiar with the football or soccer for you, our American friends, games from the 1990s. And in a time before FIFA, one game was king, Kickoff. Well, at least until sensible soccer turned up. Kickoff was predominantly played by the masses on the Amiga and the Atari ST and was developed by legendary British game developer Dino Dini, who posted on the EU blog today to confirm that a Vita PS4 version of Kickoff is in the works, which is very welcome news for those uh, of us mis missing that itch. Dino stated that after being inspired by the indie resurgence and having been given a development kit by Shahid from strategic content, he knew he had to try one more time. After working on a prototype in his spare time, Dino was able to show off a demo, and now he is working on the game full-time. Kickoff existed in a time before the Premier League, before the big money and the licenses, and was renowned for the gameplay. Dino says that those important things will not change, that the ball is not stuck 
to your feet. You can shoot the way you want. Aiming and swerving the ball will be 100% under your control. Dino confirmed that the game will be in 3D, mainly because he feels that it is easier to make games like this, like that these days. But the default views will be the classic top-down view that gamers will probably have loved from the original games. Dino also said that the game will continue in the spirit of the old games, but kickoff was controlled by an eight-direction joystick with a single button. Modern gameplay allows for multiple directional controls, and the gameplay will be turned or tuned to modern standards, which allows for improvements in precision and skill. I know that this unexpected news is very welcome for the person that wrote this, and they can't wait to find out more. We can't either. We will bring you more news on TVL as we have it. In the meantime, why not follow Dino on Twitter at DNDN1011. Next up, another rather large patch has been issued for the Vita version of Resident Evil Revelations 2, bringing fixes and new display settings to the table. That's right, guys. The mid-August released Revelations 2 was just updated to version 1.03 with its second 970... To megabyte delta patch so far, the full details of which are as follows. Paused enemy activity during loading times, added gamma settings, fixed the microphone activity icon during online raid mode, fixed fate and time information in the saved game, fixed a crash in the raid mode mission IX04. The patch is now live, and post install size appears to be 3,894 megabytes, so we're not losing much space at all. Time to update Zombie Killers. Aw, oh, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> a boy in his blob has been raided for the PlayStation Vita by German rating board USK. Publisher Majesco Entertainment revealed in August that it was working on a new A Boy and His Blob title for current gen consoles. A Boy and His Blob is a puzzle platformer that first launched on the Nintendo Wii in 2009, and while we do not know whether this rating is a port of the 2009 game or a brand new entry to the series, the game was also rated for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. One thing that we can be sure of is that we'll, we will bring you more news on this title as soon as we have it, so keep checking TBL. Alright, next up. Brad here, I believe, may be dating himself, but the Oregon Trail was a staple of his childhood. There was nothing like being able to go to the computer lab in school and hunt buffalo while trying to starve off dysentery. The only flaw in the game or the only flaw the game really had was a complete lack of zombies. Fortunately, that problem has now been rectified as a team from the men who wear many hats have announced that they're bringing Oregon Trail Complete Edition to the PlayStation Vita. Oregon Trail is a zombie survival game that is heavily influenced from that classic game with a similar sounding name. Hop onto the station wagon and drive west as you scavenge for supplies and fight off hordes of zombies. It was originally released five years ago as a web-based game, but it's now making its way to the Vita as, and the PS4 as a cross-buy title. In addition to the original game, this complete edition will also feature the Endless expansion and the brand new Final Cut expansion. Both of these expansions bring more vehicles, more characters, more cities, more bandits, and probably more dysentery. The last one is just a guess on Brad's part. Oregon Trail Complete Edition released this week, so go grab it if you're interested. Next up, Koei Tecmo has revealed that upcoming beta game La Corda Doro has, er, La Corda Doro 4, sorry, has a release date. The visual novel will launch February 25th in Japan, and it even has a trailer which you can view on the site. The trailer takes a look at the various characters and mentions the cold season approaching, meaning chances to get closer to the characters of your choice. Wink, wink. Be sure to keep it tuned to the Beat Lounge for more information on Corda Doro 4 as it becomes available. Alright, both Koei Tecmo America and Europe have announced their regional release dates for Samurai Warriors 4 Empire's localization. Coming by way of Twitter, and in Europe's case, YouTube, just a very short while ago, we now have release dates for Western localizations of Samurai Warriors 4 Empire's the European version, due out on March 11th, with the North American version launching a few short days later on March 15th. Are you excited to get your hands on Empires when it launches this March? Throw us a comment below if you're clicking on the story <laughs> and tell us your thoughts. I missed one. My bad. That's all right. <laughs> you know, I, I saved it. I made it seem like it was meant to happen. Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, next up. Episodic 2D adventure game Wanderer could make its way to the PlayStation Vita if it manages to hit its Kickstarter stretch goal. 
Wanderer is being developed by Red Cloak Games and tells the tale of a man called Rook, a graying convict who makes from cold sleep abroad a massive orbital prison facility to find that it's crashed landed on the ruins of an abandoned Earth. With the guidance of a hacker named Jin and the aid of a ragtag group of survivors, he recruits along the way. Rook must locate and explore the nine cell blocks which have detached from the prison's central tower and scattered across Earth's ghostly wasteland. The game currently needs to hit, needs to hit raise, that's, what? The game currently needs to raise 70,000 to be able to be completed, and a further 20,000 is needed for the game to make its way to PlayStation platforms. If the game excites you, then you should be sure to head to the Kickstarter page and help bring the game to our beloved handheld. All right, home stretch here. The next installment in the Digimon series to link up with the upcoming film project. Silicon Era have found out that in December issue of Bijo Magazine has some news on Digimon World Next Order, and it reveals two new Digimon and a new character. The post says that the blonde young lady is known as Roosh, and she seems to have lost her memory. She might not be able to remember much, but she carries around a Numenon plush toy and has loads of energy. The post also describes Taomon to the left of Roosh, and describes Dukemon, who is unfortunately not pictured. Taomon is described as being an expert in Anmyodo, and Dukemon receives a crimson armor when releasing its power. It was also revealed that the game will feature content that is linked with the upcoming Digimon Adventure Tri film. Digimon World Next Order is set to release in Japan in 2016, and will bring you more news as we have it. And our last piece of news. Idea Factory International is officially bringing that strategic RPG with a 1 trillion hit point end boss to western shores next year. A story about a hero named Zeoblos who gains the power of the Soul Grimoire and decides to fight against the demon god of destruction Trillion, Makai Shin Trillion will now be making its way west as Trillion, god of destruction. But how will it be coming over? Well. Idea Factory International has picked up the localization and will be bringing it to the rest of us in spring 2016, fitted with dual Japanese and English audio, English subtitles, PlayStation TV support, and even a physical version. That's right, guys. This release will be both physical and digital in the West. Woo! Here are the key features outlined in the press release. A trillion HP! The big bad boss has a trillion HP. How will you defeat him is up to your individual strategy and training. Six deadly sins to love. In between battles, you'll find some quality time al er, quality alone time with each of your six overlord candidates leading your army. Can you have a love story even in war? Prepare for battle. While Trillion sleeps, it's training time. Hit the training grounds and discover randomly generated treasure chests or strengthen weapons at the blacksmiths. And replay, replay, replay. Stats carry over with each new game plus, and there are multiple endings to unlock. With over 10 endings, there's even more reason to stand up and keep fighting. Are you excited to see this one? We know we are. And that's the news. Woo! Indeed. The news is done. Time to have <laughs> fun. Indeed. You know what's really fun, though, Tom? What? Talking about announced release games we're looking forward to from the week. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so it looks good, Tyler. It looks good. Uh, let's see here. The game you just talked about, that Trillion Destruction Gods Coming West, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really know other than what you just read about it, but it, it sounds interesting, so... And the fact that it's being supported and brought over here and physical copy, I mean, my ears perked up, so. Yay. Indeed. <laughs> um, other than that, there's I don't know if there's really anything from the news, per se, this this week around. Like, the, that, uh, oh god, what's it called? I, I read the story myself. That football game. Kickoff, that's what it's called. Um, I might take a look at it, I don't know though. It could be interesting. Um, yeah, other than that, I mean, all the other stuff I'm normally excited for, so. What about you, Kyle? Well, uh, Trillion God of Destruction definitely sounds interesting to me. Um, so I'll be keeping my eye on that one. 
Wanderer, um, that one as well. Um, has to be kickstarted, obviously, but that one sounds kind of interesting. And as I said, Oregon Trail, I'm interested in, but got to wait for that price to come down. Um, and uh, Digimon World Next Order, which hasn't been announced over here, but I'm hoping it comes. And even if not, I might get it anyway. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's a couple this week. Um, for being only 10 items, you know, half there for me. So that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good. Indeed. But anywho. <laughs> Moving on, there's something that's happening quite soon, Tyler, um, that seems to have the number 100 in it. Uh, could you explain what that is to me? I have no idea. I'm, you know, well, when you start talking, I just usually mute the podcast. Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> well, when you count from zero and up, you're eventually going to hit a number that has three digits in it. And here in America... I don't know what they do in Canada, but here in America, we, it's the it's 100. So, podcast episode 100 is going to happen, Kyle. Oh, okay, okay. What does that entail, Tyler? Well, we're going to be live streaming on s- Saturday, right? No, Sunday. Lies. We're going to be live streaming on Sunday, November 1st at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you live somewhere else, Google's your best friend. East Coast, that's 4 p.m. England, that's uh, 9 p.m. Other places, Google. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, come join us. We'll be live streaming. I don't know how long. Um, I really don't know exactly what we're going to be doing, but it should be a good time. Just probably go through a couple of the things that we normally go through, but uh, it's going to be a little different. I mean, it's going to be a party. We're going to have fun. There's How's going it? to be no news. Yeah, no so, news. It's just gonna be <laughs> take that as you will. Yeah. yeah. So hop in. We'll probably take live questions because obviously it's a live stream, so you you guys will be in there seeing it happen live, and there's going to be mess-ups. It's going to be great. You're going to see it all just raw. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Tyler's scared. Right, Tyler? I'm scared? Yeah. Why scared. am I scared? Well, all these mess ups, like they, these people don't hear it, but in this, you're like stuttering and oh, come on, you, know, you have to cut out everything. Like it's it's we record for like three hours and we get like what an hour worth of content out. I'm gonna prove you wrong. It's a <laughs> hundred. <laughs> I know. I'm just messing with you. We're not that bad. We've been doing this for long enough that we're not as bad as some. <laughs> yeah, we just hit ninety eight of them. That's right. That's right. That's a decent amount. <laughs> It's more than I can count. And Tyler only usually screws up like a dozen times. Okay. <laughs> All right, guy. <laughs> Anyways, <Don't see> <laughs> why don't you talk about the next thing then that we're doing that's coming up soon? All right. So here's the other awesome thing that's coming up that you might want to know about. On, I believe, the 7th, Tyler, right? Yes, sir. Yes, the 7th. On the 7th, we are doing Extra Life. So what that entails is the same as it entailed last year. We're going to play 24 hours of games. We're going to live stream them if Tyler's internet holds up. (laughs) (laughs) And we hope that you'll be able to join in, donate, or help in some sort of way. Um, Pretty much we're going to be going the whole day, so we're going to need people to jump in with us on multiplayer games. We'd also appreciate, and I'm sure the children would appreciate as well, any donations as they go towards Seattle Children's Hospital. Um, and, yeah, basically we're just gaming for a good cause, and we hope to see you guys there. So, yeah. Yeah, be there. Yeah. Or else Tyler will mess up even more. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, there you go. We got we got some stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks, so get prepared, get ready, get excited. And my birthday is on the first, so if you uh, want to send me awesome stuff, just go ahead. <laughs> you know where I am. Right, people? Right. Yeah, there's only one road in Canada. You'll eventually find his <laughs> house. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. There we go. That's the talking point. So let's jump into that listener mail. Is that the only one we got? That's the only one I found, Tyler. That's all right. One. 
We only have one listener mail this week. You, it's it's. What kinda, are you guys doing? No, it's kind of nice. <laughs> I mean, we've had so many like triple parters, five random questions. I mean, this is this is nice. This is a it's a relaxing. I've been having a stressful week, Kyle. Let me just enjoy <laughs> this one listener mail. All right, fine, and I'll even read it because I'm a nice guy like that. Oh, you're such a swell so, person. So Danielle. 99 at the janiel 99 at t h e j a n i e l 99 asks hey there a friend is going to buy me a vita next month what games should i get for it tyler what do you think oh man um there's so many <laughs> so many but without really knowing what your tastes are um I feel like story games are always a good one to go through. So Persona 4 is a must, and I'm sure Kyle was going to say it too. So uh, definitely Persona 4, golden. Um, if you're going to stick to the story route, I would also pick up the Danganronpa games. They've got some really good stories. Um, there's not too much gameplay in it. It's more of a visual novel, but there is a bit of gameplay, like running around and talking to people and stuff like that. But... Again, story driven. Um, if you're into shooters, you definitely need to take a look at Kills on Mercenary. It's the best, and probably will always be the best first person shooter on the Vita. So, if you're into that multiplayer or just first person shooter gameplay, then you need to get on it. There's still tons of people online playing it constantly, so you don't have to be worried about picking up a dead game. It is still much alive, and they literally just updated it again. So, good times um i'll leave it at that kyle probably has some other games to talk about so kyle what about what do you think this person should also get well my addiction you should get hot shots golf world invitational because it's friggin awesome even if you hate golf it's a good game so that's some some good compliments from me <laughs> uh you should also get um if you, especially if you're into visual novels and story-based games, um, X Plays, uh, X Plays Lost Memories, and X Plays Code Embryo. Code Embryo is the first one. Um, it's not as good as Lost Memories, but they go together, so you're gonna want to play them together. Um, what else? What else? What else? Ollie Ollie, that's a huge time waster for me. Um, if you've pretty much got like five minutes to play anything, that's what I, I pretty much play Ollie Ollie with. So. If you need, you know, a couple of minutes and you like endless runners, skateboarding, or just really hard games, then get Ollie Ollie or Ollie Ollie 2 because they're awesome. Um, hmm, what else, what else, what else? There's so many good games, Tyler. Soul Sacrifice Delta, Freedom Wars, like, <laughs> just, just buy all the games. That's my recommendation. Buy them all, and then you won't have any problems. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> But, yeah, there, there's quite a bit. I mean, if you just head to the site, you can see, like, our top-reviewed games for this year, and there's so many good ones just in this year. So. Oh, absolutely. Great stuff this year. And uh, if you need further recommendations, we always have our reviews on the site. Most of them are pretty accurate, as far as I'm concerned. I don't agree with everybody, but most of them. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works, yeah. though. Reviews aren't always going to be everyone agrees with <laughs> that's right it's opinion it's not you know some sort of scientific formula right <laughs> yeah so but yeah there you go there's there's quite a few games so definitely check out those lists and let us know what you you actually are going to get we'd, we'd like to know give us a follow-up well all right that was easy that was all the questions we got thank you indeed for your question Really appreciate it. So, Kyle, what are we going to check out? All right. Well, check this out this week. <sighs> Man. I was going to pick something out of the sales, but nothing jumps out at me. So, I'm going to be kind of a dick, and <laughs> I'm going to recommend something I just talked about, and that's x -Blaze. And I'm not going to recommend x Plays Code Embryo or Lost Memories. I'm going to recommend them as a set, as a visual novel experience, because as good as the first one is, the second one is much better, and you have to have the whole picture to get it. 
So play Code Embryo, play Lost Memories, enjoy them. They're great visual novels. There you go. <laughs> Dina wants to know if I want true love with a Russian girl. Tell her no, Tyler. Tell her no. All right. Done. Sorry, that was random. I'm just clearing out emails right now, and that's what popped up, and it made me giggle. <laughs> <laughs> our, our female Russian spam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, moving on from Check This Out, um, we go to, well, uh, Threads to Look At from the week. And this is kind of another kind of thing relating to what we were just talking about. So, um, our listener mail there was asking for recommendations for games. And I think this kind of might help as well. This thread is called Most Underrated PlayStation Vita Games. So, basically, if they're underrated, that means they have to be better than people say they are. Um, and there's quite a few games that are mentioned in this thread so far. So if you're looking for something to play and you're looking for something maybe off the beaten path, the normal kind of games that you pick from, um, then maybe that's a good place to go because there's some, some good recommendations on there. Yes, do it now. Yes. yes. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You should be doing this now. Yeah. Um, but anywho... Um, our second thread to look at from this week is called Limited Run Games. And now, this thread was created on the 8th, so it's a little bit, not old, but it's been around for a little bit. Um, and they're just talking about Limited Run Games, which are basically a company that is looking to get physical releases for games that otherwise would remain digital. Um, they've already done so for Breach and Clear, and I believe they have a couple other games kind of in the pipeline that are coming soon. Um, so we, we get that to look forward to. Um, but the other interesting thing about this thread is that Limited Run Games is actually talking in it. So if you have questions for Limited Run Games, or just, you know, want to thank them for being awesome, that's a good place to go. So I recommend that thread. Yeah, that's a good one. Again, do it. Do it now. That's right. Do it now. <laughs> well, all right. That's pretty much all we've got. It's kind of a quick episode. Isn't it? That's okay. That just means I don't have to listen to your voice any longer, Tyler. Well, fuck you too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> If you've got listener mail or comments, contact us via media services at thevitalounge.net. You can find everything we talked about today at thevitalounge.net. The news, reviews, feature articles, store updates, podcast, a community forum, and a magazine, both digital and physical. You can support the site and get physical copies of the magazine via patreon.com slash thevitalounge. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at the Vita Lounge. I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. And if you go to Facebook, just search the Vita Lounge and you will find us there. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash loungeplay. Kyle is going bananas with all those videos, so if you're looking out for some more Vita content, you definitely need to go subscribe to it and see what he's been doing. Uh, this podcast is also available on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, YouTube, and via direct download on the site. So rate us, subscribe to us on there, and let us know how we are doing. That's it. Episode 98. The next episode, Kyle's 99. And then you know what it is. It's a hundred, Tyler. Yeah. I can count. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs>